Welcome to the dark forest Jackie and her pals will never bore us Shameless confessions about our obsession Will make us laugh and smile So let's explore the dark forest And dork down for a while Hey, it's Jackie Cation. Welcome to the Dork Forest. You know the websites, JackieCation.com, DorkForest.com, TheDorkForest.com, FamilyPetAncestry.com. You're probably already there. Let's do the credits. Mike Rickberg composed and sang that song with his wife, Sarah, that you just heard. He's going to sing his version of the Mexican hat dance at the end of the program. Patrick Brady is going to fix this audio, and Vilmos works on JackieCation.com, the website. There are many ways to support the show. The Amazon link is one. You can use an Amazon link from JackieCation.com or DorkForest.com to go to Amazon. You order like normal and it supports the show. There is a straight up donation button, PayPal or Venmo to this uh, email address that is mine, Jackie at JackieCation.com, where you can just donate to the show if you like the show a lot. I think PayPal has figured out a way to do a monthly. If you want to go monthly, please do. Other ways to support the show if you want to is you can buy merch. There's Dork Forest t-shirts and all the shirts are union made here in America. So they run a little big. Union Bayside. So if you want to look up their size chart. And then the other merch is my stand-up merch. On JackieCation.com, you can watch me do stand-up. You can look at my schedule and the stand-up merch, a couple of different t-shirts, a couple of different enamel pins, and all my CDs and my DVD. If you want to live stream my DVD, it's over there at ComedyFilmNerds.com. They have a live streaming capability, or you can get a hard copy of the DVD on my website. Oh, there are premium episodes at Bandcamp. The dorkforest.bandcamp.com has probably 10 episodes that were done live. They cost me a couple of bucks to make, so I charge you a couple of bucks. If you've run out of regular episodes, go over to ba- the dorkforest.bandcamp.com and get some more. Other than that, I say this. Let's get into the show. Hey, it's Jackie Cation. I'm in my living room with one of my besties. Hello, TJ Ford. Hello, Jackie Cation. You have not been on the Dork Forest uh, since when it was a phone-in. Right, 2000. It- Five? I don't know. 2006? Early Six. days. Early mm-hmm. days. You and Anna Becker. Long time ago. Long time ago. You and I just went to Vietnam and Cambodia and uh, then and Thailand. Bangkok. And then Bangkok. And then you kept going because this is your travel leap year and your Instagram, TJ Ford, is Earthlings Anonymous. E-A-R-T-H-L-I-N-G-S. Anonymous. A-N-O-N-Y-M-O-U-S on Instagram. And uh, we, we we could talk about any number of things. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but we could talk. Uh, here's something that you have always liked, which is uh, the macabre. And now mm-hmm. it is bats. You are on a bat journey where to see more bats. You We saw bats. We didn't see bats together. You have seen many bats. I have taken a nap the day of bats. <laughs> You didn't you, go to the bats in Vietnam. I did not go to the we bats. We did in Bada Bing. Bada Bing? That was where bada the bats boom? were. It was called Bada Bing, Bada Boom? <laughs> I don't remember. You were there. <laughs> what was it called? Um, was that Cambodia? Bada Rang? Batam Bang. Batam I believe was yes. the name. And it was Cambodia, wasn't it? It was Cambodia, yes. Yes. So, and there were bats. And then, have oh, you seen the thousands, bats? Thousands, millions of bats. It was glorious. And then we went into the caves in Vietnam uh, in in the where the the Earthsea trilogy essentially the Ursula Le Guin book right uh, with the not Hoi An but Huey maybe nah, no How Long Bay How Long Bay that's yes. it yes there were, you saw bats there, there too there were bats there it was awesome mm-hmm. also bats there uh, T J Ford might be a bat dork you guys a uh, little bit uh, in, enjoying of the bats yes. pro bat I am super pro bat and I vote so <laughs> watch out. <laughs> Exactly. Don't hold yourself back, you guys. Uh, yes. So um, now, have you seen the bats in Austin, Texas? Of course I've seen. Every time I go to Austin, which is, I think I've been three times, I go to see the bats. Here's and- Those are all, this is, we have fully completed all the things I know about bats now. <laughs> uh, that, that they, they exist. exist. <laughs> and they fly. They I think do- you know that. Right. And are they flying or are they just uh, falling Controlled falling. No, they're flying. They, they have, have wings. They flap. 
flappy wings that make them fly. Yes, yeah. Their their wings, when you look at their skeleton, their wings are like our hands, but just really, really long fingers. Oh, yeah. and then membrane between. The membrane. Mm-hmm. Twixes and betweens. Mm-hmm. And then flappity flap flap. And flappity flap. And they fly and they swoop and they are so beautiful to watch. And they do it as a group? No. They do it alone. They're so, the ones I've seen have all been solo flyers. They hang together in trees, but then they each decide when they're going to fly off. Okay. And bats eat bugs? Some bats eat bugs. Some bats eat fruit. Okay. Fruit bats. Correct. Fruit bats. (laughs) Very good. (laughs) Are there bug bats? (laughs) There are bug bats. They're not really called that. (laughs) And no bats eat human blood. Okay. So we can just move past the whole fake Dracula thing. Click. Bunch of rangers of the dark (laughs) forest hanging up. Damn, well, no vampire bats. That's for your what Dracula are, dorks. Right, your Dracula, that's a different dorkdom. Mm-hmm. What uh, What are vampire bats? By, do, you, do you have any idea <laughs> what their jam is? What's their jam if it's not human blood? Is it jam? I No, I don't think it's jam. I think it's animal blood. Okay. I think they might eat. I don't know a lot about them. And when I was right. in Romania and at Dracula's castle, I didn't see any live bats. No live bats? No. Did you see stuffed bats? Sadly. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Because there, there was a couple of years... When T.J. Ford, hey, Rangers, there was a couple of years when T.J. Ford really wanted to get into taxidermy, and that's still who, in the back. Yeah, who says I don't want to? Who says you still do not wish to learn how to stuff a, stuff an animal? I can't stuff a bat, though, because they're endangered in the U.S., and it's illegal to taxidermy bats now. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I knew that from a David Sedaris owl story. <laughs> yeah, uh, there was you got to be stri- careful with yeah. taxidermy, and so I can't really say any more on uh, something that's being recorded. Oh, there you go. Mm. The mystery of what she knows about taxidermy and bats. You'll have to speculate, you guys. Okay, so have you always... Let's go back in time to when you were a tiny bat lover in yes. Minnesota. Um, oh, even even before that in New Hampshire. In New Hampshire. I was you, very tiny. You were very tiny, and you said to yourself, you know what I love? The innards of things <laughs> and, and and the macabre. <laughs> I have been with you twice mm-hmm. to see Body Worlds. And really? Yes. Good for you. I know. The second time I just sat against the wall, hyperventilating, yes. going, I'm going to be over here. I'll meet you in the gift shop. I'll meet you in the gift shop. And then you had to leave screaming out of the gift shop because it was full of uh, just muscle more, things. And, <laughs> just no bats. No, more so. transparency. Anyway, so when, so when you were, have you always liked bats, bats? Yes. When I was little, I had a little paperback book called Animals Nobody Loves. And it was about bats and sloths and I don't know what other things don't people like spiders, spiders and stuff like that. Right, pugs. The bat, (laughs) no pugs. (laughs) Uh, The bats really sort of grabbed me. Okay, so are bats mammals? Yes, they are. See, it turns out I might know a little bit more. You do. Look at you. Look at me coming up with things. The bat is a mammal, Uh which means they have hair and they have live young. Yes, they do. And they're live young. The baby clings on to the mama. Oh, like a kangaroo kind of in a pouch, but just on the outside? On the outside. And there's a beautiful kid's book called Stella Luna. Okay. That I read many years ago. And it still makes me cry because it's about a little bat baby named Stella Luna who loses her mother. (gasps) I mean... Mother drops her. Right, right. And then Stella Luna has to grow up alone. It's the typical, you know. Sure, it's a quest. Orphan quest thing. A, right, right. It's a bat on a journey. Yeah. When do they, do they, is that how bats, is that how bats, have, eventually they're just like, and done. Uh, you know, I, I don't know that much about the actual right, right, the life just- <laughs> cycle of the bats, but I do know that the mamas hold on to babies while the mamas are hanging in the trees. Okay. And then when the mamas go off to fly in the night to find food, the babies yeah. come with. Okay. Uh, and I also know that when there's danger or fires or something, a lot of times the baby bats fall off the mama. Ah. And then they land on the ground and then they're orphaned because they're the mama orphaned. Might die. So then they might live and they might die, Correct. depending on how Correct. scrappy they really are. That's right. That's it. Scrappy, scrappy Little bats. Scrappy baby bats. And uh, <laughs> I want to name a bat Scrappy now. <laughs> hey, Scrappy. I will, I will let them know that at the bat hospital. That's right. You're going to stay at a bat hospital I'm and, going, and volunteer yeah. yes. to work at a bat hospital in Australia. But let's talk about How Long Bay. That Were those the first <laughs> bats that you had seen in a while? In a while, because I haven't been to Austin in a couple of years. 
And in Portland, I have a bat house that I put on our garage, but n- never has one bat oh, gone you to were, my bat house. I don't know why. You've tried to attract bats to your own home yeah, in I Portland, have. Oregon yep. uh, by putting a bat house. Doesn't, Any, anybody else? Is it sort of like a birdhouse, but for bats? Yeah, it's a birdhouse, but with the holes underneath because the bats fly up and then okay. hang from the ceiling. But they don't like my bat house. Right. You have not, uh, for some reason, uh, have you thought about getting on Queer Eye? And possibly redoing your bat house to attract <laughs> more bats. <laughs> Maybe it would um, only attract the queer ones, but I don't no, know. No, no. Well, and you don't care. Right. You're no, you're open. I am open. You queer, are op- straight. It's all good. Gender non-conforming bats, I'm good. Right. You do live in Portland, Oregon. Okay. So yes. it's all working out. Now, so uh, so there are no bats, to your knowledge, in your home, around your home in Portland. Not in my home. Uh, my friend Leslie found a dead bat in her attic. Oh, that'll happen. Uh-huh. Sure, because a bat will accidentally go into an attic and then can't get out. Correct. Uh-huh. So it, the poor thing died. Yes. And, uh, then you have to start over. Yeah, uh, and then she tried to do. give it to me, but I can't have a dead bat in my house. It's illegal, so we had to dispose of it. I have to say I'm okay with that law. Uh, yep. And then, uh, okay. So how long Bay, how many bats did you get to see? Like I saw them, they were hanging from the top of the, we went into these caves in Vietnam after the boat, when we got off the boat, right? Right. We We sailed around. We looked around the bay. We went around the tiny islands. It looked just like Earth Sea Trilogy, Ursula Le Guin. So Puget Sound is what it kind of looks like. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, but smaller. Also Christchurch. Which is looks where? Looks like that in New Zealand. In New Zealand. Where they like have that. bats. Where also. they also have bats. Mm-hmm. Okay. So how long <laughs> but, Bay bats? Yeah. Those ones were in a cave, which mm-hmm. is a traditional place I think of bats. You keep mentioning trees. Mm-hmm. Do they, um, so they clearly live in both caves and trees. And houses. Not and, mine, and, and but not, other, right, people other people's bad, bad houses. houses. I'm trying not to feel right. bad about that, but. What is, uh, I, I, I have not seen large bats. Oh, have, have you, you seen the flying foxes in Australia are like their wingspan is like a meter. Wide, oh, really? And the bodies are like mm, a guinea pig sort of size. Wow. I would say they a are a meter, mm-hmm. three feet. Well, a little, a little bit longer. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> I mean, I, U.S. public education over here, metric. So, uh, but I did it. So, okay. So, how long bay bats? Any good tale about the the how long bay bats that you saw, or were they just incidental? They were incidental. Uh, I wasn't expecting to see them, so I wasn't really looking. And also, we were on a tour, so we had to kind of keep moving, and right. I couldn't stand and stare like I would. You would want it to. <laughs> I had to keep going so that we could go to some other cave that was bat less. Right, right. Less bats, mm-hmm. and then. Um, so now the next time you saw caves, I think was in Cambodia, right? Was that when you guys we d- went no, on a bat- 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 Batambang? Batambang, which was in Cambodia. Yes. And that's where you took uh, oh. riding bikes, right? We No, was we it- got on a little tuk-tuk. Oh, it was a oh, it was essentially a cart. Yeah. With a motorcycle in front of it. Yeah, with a motorcycle. And I was with uh my husband Tom and your husband Andy. Yep. And we cycled out well the guy cycled us out to this huge cave and the bats started coming out and they just came out in droves and we just sat there for about 20 minutes and just watched the bats was that at sunset it was it was so beautiful so they were coming out to hunt essentially They come out to hunt at night yes many bats are nocturnal and they can't see so they use echolocation to find their way but so it might as well be dark (laughs) yeah but i think fruit bats (laughs) i think fruit bats can see Okay. And so it was, I think I saw a video of that on, on your Instagram where you just had a thousand bats coming out of a cave. Yes. That uh, was for, in that Bada Bang. In yeah. Cambodia. Yes. Okay. So Earthlings Anonymous, you can watch that. And so how long, how, I mean, literally it was minutes, right? Oh, or was it like 20 minutes and we left before it was done. It was going on probably for another 25, 30 minutes. So there were thousands there, of bats. Thousands. Thousands, tens of thousands, I would reckon. Wow. But the the men folk and the driver were getting a little twitchy. Yeah, everyone was a little <laughs> They were little like, we've tie-tie. seen the bats. Here we go. We've, can we please go now? We've seen the bats. Plenty of bats have been seen. Time to so move we, on from so bats. Go. Okay. So then the next place you go, next time you see bats, was that New Zealand? 
Did you get to see any bats in the last, let's say, four months? Oh, after yes. that. When, after Cambodia, we went to Australia mm-hmm. and we ended up in Melbourne. And Melbourne has a huge Melbourne. flying fox population. Which that, is a kind of bat. The flying fox is the big one I was telling you about. Right. Like, oh, the, with the meter. The, with the meter, meter yeah, wide yeah. wingspan. And there's a place in Melbourne that you can go and you can see the bats hanging all thousands, tens of thousands of them hanging in the trees. And you go at dusk and you can see them begin to stretch and move and they make noise and they get in little fights and little conversations with each other. And then they swoop off and fly away. And so we went over there and watched and the got to for see about that. an hour. Oh my God. There's also a tape of that on my Instagram account. Because wow. I couldn't. Could not. not. No, no. You got it. it it's uh, And those are giant flying fox bats. They're flying foxes and they swoop over your head and it's. Do they eat like mice and stuff? No, they're, or they're all bugs. They're and, fruit. Oh, those are, those fruit, are fruit. Those are vegetarian bats. Yeah, they like mangoes and and other tropical and tropical fruity things. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And and that was outside of Melbourne. Um, no, or, it was in the city. It was in the it city. It was in somewhere. kind of a sanctuary, you know, trees okay. and a river and stuff. Well, like a, like a city, like a like a Central Park like kind of protected park. area. Correct. Yeah. They Got used it. to be in the botanical gardens, which are beautiful, mm-hmm. but they were making too much mess and pooping their guano all over the place and, yep. and destroying the trees. So uh-huh. they moved them all. I don't know how they move bats <laughs> to a new place, but they did. They hold a handful of grapes out. Maybe. Follow these. Here, batty, batty. Here, I don't know. Come on. So then I went back the following day. Tom chose not to come back and see the bats again, but I went back in the middle of the day just to see what they were like. Right. In the middle of the day. And they were, re- they're very restless sleepers. Okay. Bats. So they're they were all sleepy, but. Moving around and talking and right, running right. up and down the the branches so, and very restless. Like if I was sleeping with the bats, I you wouldn't sleep. You don't get a lot of sleep. That no. doesn't sound like they were sleeping at all. No. It sounds like they might nap they and nap. then get up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I stood there for an hour and watched. Watched more bats. More bats. Yeah. So um, are they in the dark always? Were they in the dark during the daytime? What do you mean? Were, were they, they in, in a, dark? like they were in trees, Just right? Just hanging in trees. I mean, it was. And it was like daytime. The forest. It was like. Darkish. There's a word for that. Shade. <laughs> Brillig. I think okay. is what Lewis Carroll said. Right. Oh, I don't know that one. You know, I've never read Lewis Carroll. Oh no. I know. I know. It's weird. That I've had a Lewis Carroll dork on, who wanted me to, and I was like, I'll give it a shot. And yeah. then uh, I think I read the thing that was in front of me instead. So, okay. uh, but I, th- I believe we have any number of Lewis Carroll in this house. You do. You have a, a, the complete works right next to my bed. Oh, fair enough. I think Andy <laughs> got that as a gift from Michael Everson, uh, who currently, I believe, lives in Scotland. Now, so after Australia... Well, I mean, that's just Melbourne. You didn't happen to see them in, in other parts of Australia where you were. More oh, bats? Oh, yes, we did. Oh, did you? We went up to Alice Springs <laughs> yes. to go to Uluru, and we camped outside mm-hmm. two nights in a row, and I laid there in my sleeping bag outside, and I looked up at the stars and the Milky Way and the bats oh, flying over my out? head. So, and, and so you saw bats uh, oh, yes. outside of Alice Springs. Yes. All right. That was lovely. And then we went to New Zealand and I saw random bats there. Just random bats. Just random in different places we were right. We were staying. So now what Tom, your fellow, has done has signed you up to be a volunteer in Australia at a bat hospital. Yes, the Tolga Bat Hospital. T O L G A? Uh-huh. All right. Uh uh, where is that? In Sydney? It's in a town called Atherton, which is outside of Cairns, which is where the Great Barrier Reef is. So right. the northwest, north, sorry, northeast portion of Australia. Right. Queensland. Right, right. Queensland. And, uh, and you're going there in March? I'm going there in mid-March. And how long will you stay? I'll be there for a month. For a month to work yes. with, with tiny bats? To work with, right now they have 550 baby bats. It's been a really bad year for bat deaths. They lost a third of their bat population due to the fires. Oof really bad right yeah. so do, are, are they hand feeding the bats is that yes. what they're doing we cut up watermelon and apples and pineapple and we have to feed them and the really tiny babies you have to dropper feed you right right like bottles like but bottles eyedroppers? with i don't know what you feed the bats i'll find out yeah maybe it's just watermelon juice but yeah yeah uh, but that's our job is to sort of feed them 
cut up all the fruit, feed them, clean up after clean, them, clean them up, and then help get them ready to be re released into the world. Awesome, because that's the point. It's not really like a bat zoo; it's a bat hospital where right. they supposedly get better. I wonder if there is a bat zoo. I mean, there's bats in zoos. There's bats in zoos. Yeah, the nocturnal houses always. Yeah, it's always like the snake. The, yeah. the the snake holding area and whatever. Yeah, the mm -hmm. sloths and the bats I saw in, when I was in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. So there's bats down there. Mm -hmm. So if people follow your Instagram, they are going to get to go oh. everywhere. Uh, yeah, I hope so. Cause yeah. Cause after Australia, then I'm heading to uh, Europe. Okay. Wow. Where hopefully so, there'll be more bats. Hopefully there'll be more bats. And okay. so, yeah, so if you go back, you maybe you catch a picture of me. In uh, in Vietnam or Cambodia, right there. I think we, there are some on my there, Instagram. Yeah, it was uh, we, eighteen days. We did. We traveled around. Eighteen days. We did. And so, you're you're calling this uh, the Tej Leap Year? If I got that that right or correct, no? correct, that is absolutely right. Hashtag Tej Leap Year. Hashtag Tej Leap Year. Uh, Tj Ford at Earthlings Anonymous on Instagram. And so so far this year, where you've spent a lot of time in Hong Kong. Yes. And are there bats in Hong Kong? Uh, were there bats in Hong Kong? I Let certainly didn't. I, I Well, not in the main, you know, not in the downtown city part, but we did go out to Landau Island where we were running on the trails and we did see some sleeping bats. Okay. Out there. Are you always looking up thinking, I wonder if there's a bat over there? Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> it's kind of hard on the trails because then I fall down and I... Right, you gotta, slice my knees open. Yeah, you're gonna want to see where the where your feet are falling. Yeah, and because uh, you were also a long distance runner. Yes, and I am. Uh, the longest in some ways. Um, mm, not are there are there are there longer r runs than the ones that you have run? Yeah, I ran a couple of hundred mile races, but now there are two hundred mile races, and there's one that I think is two hundred and thirty six miles. So. The 236 miles, even 100 miles, that feels like cricket. That feels like it takes days. It does. Does it? Well, if you're really fast, it takes less than a day. And if you're not, not super fast? fast, it takes a day. I mean, 100 miles takes you 36 hours. 40 is kind of tops. And then they cut okay. it off. And then they like pull you off the trail. They pull you off the trail. Yeah, because they're, like, they're like, it's not going to happen this right. time. Why don't you just yeah. walk? But the 200 milers, I mean, those are days, like four yeah. days. Four days? Yeah. Where you're just running. Well, and you, and you lie down and sleep for an hour and then you get up and... Oh, it's, I'm it's not like interested. that, is it? I am not interested. <laughs> Thank God. No. Because you have been interested in everything up to the 236 <laughs> mile, 100 miles. Yeah, 100, I'm good with 100 miles. I'm really I'm good with that. That seems plenty. Yeah. It's uh, the, tw the, I remember when it was just marathons with you. Um, and uh, And you were really interested in me remembering that it's 26.2. And you see, you remember. I did remember, yeah. Because yeah. uh, the point two is very important uh, to everybody who's run one. And, right, uh, the point two. Don't forget the point two. Don't forget the point two. Yeah. Why is it 26.2? I mean, I know that the old Greek story about marathon. Right, it goes back to... But that can't to... possibly be real. No, the, <laughs> that might, I don't know, apocryphal. It's a nice story, right? It's a very nice story. I like the story of... of uh, Fidipides running to marathon. Right. And I like to say Fidipides. Hey, we won. Yeah. And the Spartans are like, oh, were they fighting? I <laughs> and uh, <laughs> did we miss a <laughs> slow back then? Did we miss a battle? <laughs> <laughs> no, the marathon was being run in London, but King, oh crap. I think it was King George, one of those kings back then. Oh, I'm very and, bad. And to with pick my George. Kings. But if you pick George, it's a good pick because there was I lots of those. I think it's going to be George or maybe Edward. Okay. Anyway, it was back like early 1900s and he didn't want to leave. He wanted to watch the marathon, but he didn't want to leave um, the palace. So he said, make the finish line here. Oh. <laughs> that also could be apocryphal, but I like that story. Uh, that so then they had to run an extra point too and everyone went. F King George. Right. I don't know if I can say bad words on your podcast. So like cunt? Yes, you can. <laughs> oh. So it? fuck King George and his point <laughs> fucking two miles. Because really it should just be done at twenty six. But right. interestingly, twenty six point two miles is like forty two kilometers. Oh, exactly. I don't know. I think it's forty two point two. 
<laughs> anyway, but it's I don't again know why I said super that. close. I ran a marathon on my forty second birthday, so I thought that was really cool. I was running forty two k on right. my forty second birthday. Right, right, because numerology is yeah. real. Yeah, it is. And, uh, that was Dublin, and was uh, and so and you've run you've run marathons in almost uh, every continent, right? Oh no, no. I'm oh no, not, I'm not one of those people. Nope. Did you run in? Uh, I feel like we had a conversation. You might not have done it. You wanted to run in Venice. There's uh, a Venice marathon, except for that yes. it was cobblestony. Yeah. And you were a little worried about uh, turning was, an ankle. Yeah, I was worried about that. And also it's really muggy mm -hmm. in Venice. And there's lots of really narrow, turny kind of streets. And the turning would be hard. But I, I have run in, I've run marathons in Europe, but I have not run in Asia or Antarctica or South America. So no, or I'm not a seven continent runner person. Okay. There, though there is a Australia. Group. No, I haven't run a marathon there. And okay, so um, there of course there's a group. There's a group. Uh, why wouldn't there be a group? <laughs> right. So there's the seven continents marathoners. There's the hundred marathon marathoners. There's the fifty states marathoners. I'm not really a, a peak bagger like that. Right. I just like to run. What's that word? Peak, peak ba bagger. It's people who just like to climb mountains to say, oh, I ticked another one off my list. Okay. So you're not necessarily no. doing that. No, I go back and do the same marathon like two, three times. Right. You just, if you like the course, I think. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. Just like What are when your I favorite travel. courses? Um, that's so hard to say. The The Redwoods in California. It was, like was right one of your great ones? Is, that's beautiful. Um, Dublin's fun because there's Guinness. Real Guinness at the end of it. Oh, at the end of it. Uh huh. Um, uh, Reykjavik is really fun. It's kind of an urban course, so it's not that interesting. But it's Reykjavik, and it's Iceland, and I love it. Right. Um, you get to be in Iceland. Yeah. And it's never too hot. No, it's never too hot there. <laughs> never, never, never too hot. And then Loch Ness is very cool because you run along Loch Ness, and you get to see the monster. Oh, you get to see the Loch Ness monster. Uh -huh. Oh, that'll be that'll yeah. be nice. Have you ever seen the Mothman? Uh, no. no, that's another mythical being that uh, my friend Karen Rontowski enjoys. Is there a marathon, a Mothman marathon? Because I could oh. run it. Oh, uh, I think there probably is. Tell Let's, Karen that oh, there needs to be a Mothman marathon. And we can look not, into I'll that start one <laughs> Mothman marathon because she uh, she exercises. But it, do you think that you run marathons for exercise? Is that why you started running? Why did you start running? I don't even remember when you... St and we've known each other since we I, were children. Yes. I <laughs> used to think that running was a really stupid thing to do. And I only had to run to train for tennis, which I used to play. Okay. So you did it for training for tennis right. initially. But then I stopped because then I was a 20-something and then I just drank and didn't do any exercise for like 10 years. And then... I don't know. what I was a massage therapist and I had a couple clients running the New York City Marathon. And I thought, well... Maybe I should try that. And they said, oh, you should totally run the New York City Marathon. You love it. <laughs> and so... So then you started I, training? So I started training that night. I remember I lived on the eighth floor and I ran up and down eight flights of stairs like eight times. And the next day I couldn't move. Oh my gosh. It was really dumb. Yeah, yeah. That's not how you do that. <laughs> no, it's not how you it's start a... training for a marathon. <laughs> You know what? I've decided. What, what do you think of this idea? I'm going to run a marathon. Not going to train at all. Just going to show up. Just going to show up. And then mm -hmm. I'm going to twenty. And then of course, at forty hours, they're going to pull me off the track. And they go, right. eh, it didn't work this time. Yeah, you're done. And uh, so, uh, <laughs> better luck next time. Better luck next so. time. So you lived on an eighth. The eighth floor was that the place on thirty. Correct, on okay. 30th. On 30th in New York City. I don't live there now, so we can give the exact address. 207 East 30th Street, apartment 8B. 8B, and but there was an elevator. Mm -hmm. And you... <laughs> I ran up and down You ran up and down the stairs. Yeah. Much, I'm sure, to your neighbor's uh, delight. And then it... Well, you know, it was a stairwell. So That's, was true. Fine. That's true. And then it turned out that you couldn't just get into the New York City Marathon. You had to apply, oh, you know, really? a bit before that. So, so you can't just run... A, you're like, I want to run a marathon. And in many cases, like like the famous ones, like Boston. Oh, Boston, you have to, you qualify. Have to qualify. Yeah, you, you have also to, mm -hmm. you have to apply and qualify. You have to, to qualify and then apply. Oh, and you might not even get in then. Oh, same thing. Same thing with New York. Well, New York is a lottery, so you can pay to get your name in the lottery, and then you may or may not get it. Uh, you can raise money for charity and they'll let you in then, but you have to raise like four or five thousand dollars. It's a lot. It's not okay. just like here's ten dollars. Right, right. Here's you know for you two hundred fifty dollars. Like, no, it's thousands. Right. Uh, There's sort of a, a a minimum. Or you can yeah, 
or you can qualify in for time. But most marathons, they, you know, lots of people are running them now. Okay. It's not really as special. I mean, okay. I think a lot of people want to do it. So that's great. Like yeah. a million people running marathons, but you have to sign up early. Okay. You got to get in early. You got and, to get in early. Right. So if, like, let's say that you qualify, you, you have to run a certain rate, uh, like pace. Yep. To get in, to mm-hmm. qualify. And then you're allowed to spend $25 to apply or whatever it is, right? <laughs> right. And cool. well, how nice of them. And then and then you don't get in sometimes? Yeah. Like I applied two years ago for New York. New York was only $11 to get in the lottery. Oh, good. So I put my name in. I did not get in. But two years before that, I did get in. So, okay. So then I got to run the New York, the New York City York. Marathon, and I did it dressed as Wonder Woman, which was pretty fun. I saw those pictures. It was and, very uh, fun. I got tired of giving little girls high fives, but I couldn't stop because <laughs> they were so excited to see yes, Wonder Woman. Yes, exactly. Running uh, the streets of, did you run all five boroughs? Yes. Is that one of the you things all, that you do? That is why the New York City Marathon is so awesome, because you start on Staten Island, and you run all the boroughs, and you finish in Central Park, and it is how do you get off of Staten Island? Is there a bridge? There's a bridge. The Verrazano Narrows Bridge. Okay. Yeah. All right. And that's how you do it. That's how you do it. And where do you end up? In Central Park. Okay. That makes sense. You go up into the Bronx like for five feet. Okay. And then you turn back down and you run back down into Central Park. Okay. And it's really And cool. And as the Bronx become more gentrified, I'm sure you'll go deeper. I hope um, so. Yeah. Because it's a little silly. You just cross a little bridge and then you cross back and... Oh, yeah, That's yeah. That's the Bronx. That's the Bronx. We spend a lot, a lot of time in Brooklyn. Yeah. A lot, a lot of time in Queens. Okay. You get an Italian ice but, sometimes as you run through Queens. Um, you know, I, I did, actually. Oh, yeah, there you go. People are handing out all sorts of pizza and beer. Oh, that's and right. Snacks and popsicles. I and, remember when you started oh, running. Yeah. And um, I think it was, pro- actually, it was when I really noticed you were running a lot. Yeah, 1999. Yeah, would have been would have been like I think it was 2001. 2001 or, was the year I ran the New York City Marathon. Okay, for the first time. And you've run Boston too, right? I have run Boston three times. Three times. I like to run marathons three times. <laughs> <laughs> Portland three times, Seattle three times, Boston three times. L.A. just the one time. L.A. just the one time. Though I'll come back because they've changed the course. So. Right, and I remember you said I don't want to run this again because this course is lame. <laughs> and then then Ooh. they changed the course. Yeah, and they you were listened like, to me. They listened to you. They, they heard, heard me. Right, you spoke it into the into the Speak wind. Speak your truth because <laughs> it gets listened. To. Right, and uh, and so it came to pass. Yeah, and uh, but you have a run again. Um, though the the path might be a better, more interesting. Yeah, and and now I do more trail <clears throat> runs. Oh, and, right, which and is more nature. asphalt runs because it's easier on my body and you get to be out in the woods and it's and very it's beautiful it's much... in a different way. But I'm kind of getting intrigued by road marathons again. Okay. So I might I might do this. Now, I also remember there was a short time when you were running or, or either you were or you were talking to me about people you knew who were running barefoot. Oh, yes. What was that? When did that happen? That was and a is mistake that still for happening? me. Okay. Um what was that? Maybe 10, 12 years ago? Yeah, the barefoot running craze started. Yeah. And uh, the problem is that y- a lot of us just, we grew up in shoes. And so <laughs> when right. you're 40 years old, you can't suddenly throw your shoes away and just run around in bare feet. Some people right. can, but my arches are too high. Yeah. And I tried to run and I tried starting out very slowly and doing like 100 yards and then yeah. 200 yards, but it, it was really bad. So Did I had to stop. Right. Was it With was the, it like cutting your feet up and Well that well I wore little toe shoes. Oh those the, the shoes that that make your shoes, ha- feet look like hands? Exactly. I Are they those. comfortable? They're super comfortable. And I wear them now around the house. Because they're super cozy. And they're good for my bunions because they spread your toes out. Oh. And they help your bunions. I got a friend who's got a bunion. Yeah. Uh she maybe could buy those toe shoes. She could buy those toe shoes, yeah. And then she would enjoy that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But no, I don't run. I run in actual shoes, <laughs> trail shoes or road shoes. Okay. And uh, that is an it, – okay, this – the I'm thinking of all the fr- friends of mine who have feet problems. <laughs> I'm like, I wonder if those toe shoes could fix everything. They're hard to find because there was a lawsuit against them. Oh, really? Vibram Five Fingers. Was the name of it? Uh-huh. <laughs> V-I-B-R-A-M. So they might still make them, but lots of people sued them because they would try to run a long way in their five fingers and they would get 
not just foot problems, but calf problems and thigh problems and hip problems and all sorts of problems because there's no support. Not right? everyone really. I don't. And people will argue with me, but I don't believe that every human is meant to run barefoot. Oh, right. But people who believe in running barefoot, I'm sure, uh, believe it with all their soul. And uh, yeah. with all their soul. Oh, wait a minute. It's a pun. <sighs> Didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You said you no, look at me I like I you, like like you thought I did that on purpose. I thought you did. <laughs> uh, no, no, but I'm always writing, as we know, as or, we know. You're always, always stand up, writing, stand upping. Yeah, that wouldn't. Uh, let's not put that in the act. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> But people who do run barefoot, like people believe in things a great deal. Well, and if it works for your body, it's like yes. it's like the keto diet or you know, the vegan diet. Like it's going to work for some people. The vegan does not work for me. The keto does not work for me. Like That's, my own diet works for me and it it's what taken is your me a while diet? to eat, uh, eat everything that I like to eat. Right, and run like a crazy person and, uh, to work it off. And, and lift weights. And lift and weights. Run. Now, here's uh, – that's the story I was going to start telling is in 2000, 2000 or 2001 when you first moved to Portland. When did you move to Portland? Summer of 2000. Okay. So it was right after that, and you were super thin. And I remember thinking to what myself, was I was a little worried about you. And then <laughs> I opened your pantry, and I was like, I am no longer worried about her. Right. And uh, because you were running so – like the training for – you were running so many miles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you run that much, you can pretty much eat – Well, early I mean, days. I mean, eventually my body accommodated – for right. that running. <laughs> and so when I stopped running, like after a big race, I would stop and oh, rest take for a, two or three weeks. But I yeah. would eat the same amount that I was eating when I was training and running 60, 70 miles a week. Right. And it's not – doesn't sustain that thin body thing. No, no. Because because uh, you're not burning the same number right. of calories. And then eventually even – like I could train 60 miles now and I can't eat as much. As I used to, because my body's just like, oh, of course you run 60 miles a week. We're not going to oh, burn right. any extra calories just because of that. But I still <laughs> like to eat a hamburger and a milkshake when I'm done with a long run. Yeah. What kind of milkshake do you like? Chocolate. You enjoy a chocolate milkshake. Or there are things called pie shakes that I found in New York City where they blend a piece of pie into a shake. What's happening? Oh, it's so what? good. Why it's would they so do that, good. though? Because it's so good. Well, it sounds good, but it's, it's like... Essentially, do you know what it feels like? It feels like Willy Wonka. It's like, <laughs> like you're going to have a pie all, shake room. <laughs> you get all the dessert that you wanted, ice cream and pie. Yeah. Um, but we're going to make it a shake because you're going to want to consume it quickly. Right. You want to do it, take it on the run. You can't <laughs> take apple pie a la mode on a plate when you're walking down the street in Manhattan, but you can just grab a pie, a pie shake. shake and go. Fucking pie shake. Yeah, when they got big straws so that the chunks of pie so they do, oh, come so up through the straw. Otherwise, a normal straw, you couldn't get the chunk of pie in there. So they, they leave some chunks in. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, well, they blender it, you know. Sure. They blenderize it. Sure. But not to soup. Right, not, not, not to... And, you know, it's kind of like, I guess, what Dairy Queen kind of does with their whatever you blizzards. call it. The blizzards. It's like that, but... But with pie, with like homemade <laughs> pie. They're awesome. I can't remember the name of the restaurant that makes them, but well, now you I want to just Google pie shake and figure oh, it out or no, make your I've own. I've seen pie shakes here in Los Angeles. You have? Well, oh. clearly we have a destination after this podcast. <laughs> yes, and yes, it might be either uh, a Dairy Queen to get me a blizzard or a pie shake. My ad, my ad, my ad. I'm about to do an ad. Rangers, it's an ad for Robin Hood. Robinhood is an investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks, ETFs, options, and cryptos, all commission-free. While other brokerages charge up to $10 for every trade, Robinhood doesn't charge any commission fees, so you can trade stocks and keep all of your profits. Plus, there's no account minimum deposit needed to get started, so you can start investing at any level. The simple, intuitive design of Robinhood makes investing easy for newcomers and experts alike. View easy-to-understand charts and market data. Place a trade in just four taps on your smartphone. You can also view stock collections such as the 100 most popular. With Robinhood, you can learn how to invest in the market as you build your portfolio. 
Discover new stocks, track your favorite companies, and get custom notifications for price movements so you never miss the right moment to invest. Robinhood is giving listeners of the Dork Forest a free stock like Apple, Ford, or Sprint to help you build your portfolio. Sign up at forest.robinhood.com. Let's get back into the show. Maybe they should have donut shakes in LA because you guys have donut shops everywhere. Yeah, that's a little ridiculous. It's It was so funny when I, when I moved here because, you know, when you move to Los Angeles, you think to yourself, Oh, they're all going to be eating wheatgrass and, and, and kale and, and, and it's all going to be super healthy and there's not going to be any sugar anywhere. And then you're like, there's a oh. yum yum donuts. And then there's an, another donut shop. There's even a spud nuts, which is a donuts what made is... out of potatoes. Oh, and um, that might be my way to eat potatoes because you don't like potatoes. I like only hash browns and French fries. That's plenty of potato. What, yeah, but what, they're like the worst thing for to you? do to a potato. Like a potato is kind of a healthy thing, but mm-hmm. if you deep fry it in butter and oil and then, you know, pour salt all over it, it's not really healthy anymore. What do you think a spud donut looks like? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's got some lard but and some sugar. They, they could fill it with fruit though, and then it would be <laughs> like, yeah, so, spud donuts. So you're still running. I am still running. Like you ran this morning. I did. Yeah. But you you were just trying to get moving is from, from right. what Tom was saying. It's hard with all the traveling I'm doing. This is something I've got to work on is figure out how I can do my running. I mean, we moved around so much for three months that it, we just didn't – we didn't make the time yeah. to do our hour, two-hour runs every day. But okay. now that I'm going back to New Zealand and Australia and not moving around, I plan to get back into it. Right. So how, how long did you run today? Any idea? Uh, a little over four miles. Okay. Wow. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And that's, and is, is that, is, is there a standard thing where you're like, I just need to get back into it. I need to get moving that yeah. you do. Is that about it? minutes to an hour. At a, at a pretty good pace. Nothing killing yourself. Oh, just, nothing killing. Just yeah. how it feels good. Okay. And then you run to catch the light, you know, to, oh, right. to catch the crosswalk <laughs> light. Right. Like you do those kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you're not an idiot. No, you're like I'm not gonna just not jog. Gonna, do you have right. jog in place at the uh, at the light? I do. Okay. Yeah, I'm always curious because I see the people doing it, and I was like, what does it What does that do for you? Is it just keep you warmed up? Well, I'm just irritated that I have to stop and right. wait for cars to go by, and I don't want to shut my watch off, you know, because I'm tracking how oh, right, far right. I'm going and my pace and stuff. So I don't want to shut my watch off. So I just kind of keep bouncing and like. Then we can go. It's okay. Not, it's not to, people think it's to keep burning calories, but I'm not thinking about burning calories on my run. I'm just thinking about running. Okay. Oh, really? Mm. What are you thinking about running? Oh, I think about my foot as it's landing on the ground. I think about how my shoulders are. I think about what I'm going to eat when I'm done with the run. <laughs> I think about what I'm training for. And if I'm training for something really big, I'll be do visualizations and stuff. Sure, sure. Uh, sometimes I... Um, Write letters to people in my head. Okay. Do you ever have the good argument? I have arguments all the time in my yeah. head. I You probably win. Uh, of course I do. Oh I God. say brilliant, pithy things that just knock them right, off right. their feet. Sometimes I, cause I, sometimes God, I like to go on uh, what I like to call the longest of all walks, uh-huh. where uh, I just wander. And uh, I always end up at a coffee shop on the way there and usually on the way back. <laughs> and um, just uh, essentially I'll go to a coffee shop. I'll walk to a third co- <laughs> a third destination, another coffee <laughs> shop, and then I'll come home. Well, that's good. And, uh, You're but walking. It, yeah, yeah. It's a good – it's a nice walk. And then yeah. I get to have some iced coffee and our my life is uh, that much better. Yeah. So, see? It's kind of the same with the running. Yeah? Okay. We just go farther. Right. And slightly faster. And, and it is often for the end result of doing a race. Okay. You know. Are you going to be racing this year, to your knowledge? Do you have any plans? Well, uh, that because is Because you're traveling. I'm traveling. There's a race in Romania that I'm going to be doing. All right. And then I'm going to see what kind of race... It, see, the problem is you have to sign up so far ahead. Okay. That I haven't really done that because I didn't know where I was going to be. Right. So kind of random traveling and running actual races yep. doesn't really go together. Right. And and I'd rather just run with friends and run For in beautiful fun. places and see stuff rather than try to figure out races and be held to that. And and also, I just don't know how much I'm going to be able to train. So Right. Fair enough. That is yeah. interesting. Yeah. Uh, I wonder um, about 
So you're going to New Zealand for next, like yes. from here? Are you flying to New Zealand from Los Angeles? No, uh, next week I am. Okay. Yeah. So you're going home and I'm then- going I'm going home to Portland to repack my backpack. Essentially regroup. Yep. And then head out. Say goodbye to the cat, goodbye to the husband. Right. And, and then go to New Zealand for like two weeks? Three weeks in New Zealand. And then a month in Australia? And then a month in Australia. Okay. Yeah. And then from there, will you come back to the United States or will you go right to Europe? I will come back to the United States to hang out with my husband. Right. For a please. little while, but not in Portland. We're just going to meet somewhere and have a, like a little vacation. Right. And then I'll go to New York for a week mm -hmm. and see some old clients maybe and then some friends. And then I will fly from New York to Moscow. Moscow, Russia. Russia for two days. And then... What month is that? That's going to be... I fly out on May 1st, which is kind of interesting. That but, is, of course, right. fascinating. May Day. I know. And, uh, right? so, I get to fly to Moscow. Right. Will you land on May Day? <laughs> No, I think it'll be the next day. Okay. Yeah. I think it'll be May 2nd. May 2nd. Because so you got to go JFK to Russia. I don't even know, like 10 hours and right, right. One, one day. And you're only going to spend two days in Moscow? Yeah, because it's only on my way to Sofia, Bulgaria, Ah, where I'm heading out on a two-week tour to see communist uh, sites of Bulgaria. <laughs> oh, all right. So like yeah. sort of a, 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 a glimpse of Soviet uh, era. Correct. Yeah. Uh, Bulgaria? Yeah. Wow, that sounds cheerful. Yeah. In other news, <laughs> bats, you guys. Bats. <laughs> bats. There should be some bats in Bulgaria, I should oh, imagine. Oh, I'm hoping. And then from Bulgaria, I'm going back to Romania to run the Transylvania Ultra. Oh, are you? How yeah. long's an ultra? Well, the ultra is really anything over a marathon, but okay. because the hills are so hilly in Transylvania, I'm only going to run 20k, which is like 12 miles. Okay, I, I just but, I don't have well, the training to. Yeah, uh, altitude obviously uh, affects. Oh, yeah. Have you ever run um, a marathon in like Denver or Peru? I've run in Peru, <laughs> and I've run a marathon here in the U.S. where I had to climb up and down like 20,000 feet. Up and down. Where's that? That was in Ashland, Oregon. What? Actually, was it 20,000 feet? No, it was only 18,000 feet of it, elevation change. Why would you lie to me? I know. I'm sorry. Um, so, <laughs> sorry. The, uh, sorry. So, but was that a full-on marathon? No, that was the 100 the Ashland, miler that I did. That was the 100 miler? Yeah. Wow. So you have 100 miles, so you're not going up super steep, steep things all right. the time, but... The up and down adds up to, you know, 18 or And are there mile feet. marker people to check on you to make sure that you're still alive? There are aid Have, stations. Okay. So you're not low jacked or anything, right? Or What do you mean low jacked? Like, you, like you'll have your watch. Yeah. And so if you needed to call for help, though. Well, you can't You'd have really. to get to an aid station. You have to get to the next aid station. And but they're about five, six miles apart. Okay. Which isn't which is nothing if you're running a hundred miles, kind of right. Or if you fall down on the side of the trail, someone will be behind you, right? And they'll say, "Do you need help?" And you say, "Yeah, go to the next aid station and tell them that I just, you know, broke my arm and I yeah. can't move." Whatever. Well, if you mean for broke your arm, you could still keep going, but right. you know, like I can't move. Whatever. <laughs> right. So send something's someone. happened, but send it, somebody back. But I'd hardly ever knock on wood. Yeah, yeah, does not happen. Yes, that's great. Yeah. That's uh, that uh, is key, I think. Yes. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> so the Transylvania has a hundred k, but there's like thirty thousand feet of climbing, and I'm just not trained for that. Right. And how many miles? Wait, if twelve, uh, if twenty thousand, yeah, sixty six miles. Yeah, that's that's, that's a long, long mm -hmm. that's a long run right there. Yes, and the time limit is like thirty six hours, which is crazy for a mm hundred -hmm. k. Oh my gosh, that's. Banana land. Yeah. So I'm just going to run the short, short one because right, I want to run Dracula's Castle because I love Dracula's Castle. <laughs> and there's a bat on the t shirt. Oh, that you get a free t shirt? You're running it for ain't the free. shirt? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Neither is the Dork Forest TJ Ford. No. You get a t shirt understand. for this. I get a t shirt. Yep. But you got to gotta tell me about bats and running and travel for an hour to do it. Well, and that's... bats and running and travel. Have you ever thought of. So one day, Earthlings Anonymous is going to be a blog site, but as of right now, it's a photojournalist site, kind of. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. exactly, because I am a, a Luddite. And, and so you're trying to figure out WordPress. I and can't figure out WordPress. I can't figure out any of it. I can't even figure out how to download my pictures off my phone onto my computer, because I am an idiot. 
no, no, uh, please uh, never call yourself an well, idiot. And because the thing well, about that's a simple thing, everyone does it. And the last time I didn't do it, I wrecked my phone and I lost all of my pictures of the Galileo Museum in Florence, Italy. Mm-hmm. Where haven't you been? <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, I haven't been to a lot of places. I know it, but you it's... You know, there's uh, those hundred country people, the yeah. other peak baggers. Oh, is that another? I, and I I was counting up one time, and I've only been to like 26 countries, because I go back to places. Right. Because like, I, I love... I fell in love with Peru, so I went back to Peru three times, and I fell in love with Iceland. I've been there six, seven times. Wow. You know, so I go Have back Have you ever to dressed up places. like a Viking? I haven't, but my best have. friend has. <laughs> uh, next time you go to Reykjavik, you got to go to I the Ming Gallery. Promise, I will. And because uh, that guy, uh, I don't know, he just uh, it was a fair price for an amazing product, and <laughs> uh, the picture's right there. Yes, I'm <laughs> yeah. looking at him right yep. now. So yes, I my my whole point in traveling is not to see how many countries I can check off my list, but right. to be in the country and meet the people in the country and meet runners in the country. And I yeah. pretty much fall in love with every country I've been to. So I try to go back. Right. You want to go back and you kind of want to connect I, with someone there. Yeah. And, I want to go and, back to Romania. I was in Romania three years ago and I'm, I've am i been longing to go back mm-hmm. ever since. Now, what I like to do is I like to go to a, a, a place and then I like to stay there for like three to five days. Mm-hmm. At least, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, probably because of stand-up comedy, because uh, that's how long you stay. <laughs> okay. And Three then to five days. Right, and then you go to the same coffee shop every day until you sort of become a regular. And that's and really cool. Isn't that's it? the funnest part yeah. for me when I travel. I like to. I like to think that. Not not pretend that I live there because I do live there for those three to five days. Right. That's You're, where I'm living. You just put yourself in that place and you say yeah here here i am going to the same coffee shop every day and they know how to make my coffee right and i think um many years ago for our honeymoon we went to italy and um we went in i forget who was telling me this is that um we were standing outside this coffee shop and a guy came in and it somebody said oh that guy's coming in for his 9 a.m glass of wine (laughs) Before he goes to bed. And uh, because it was like the night shift guys had come in at the end. And I remember that here in Los Angeles. I used to have a day job over in Toluca Lake. And I'd go to Papu's Hot Dog Show for breakfast before I went to work. Uh And there were guys who came off the night shift and would have a beer with their breakfast Mm -hmm. and then go go home. Yeah. And I, I think it's exactly the same thing. Yeah. And to see that in other countries and in other, it's yeah. really cool. It's great. I My goal when I retire is to go be a regular at some place, some <laughs> restaurant or bar. I think that's that's good. Do you know what we call Hashtag that? Uh, uh, we call that giving up. Uh, sometimes <laughs> I walk into a bar and I'm like, this looks like a really good place to just call it. And, well, uh, that's not going to be my regular place. But I right. remember I had a regular bar in Manhattan. Rocky yeah, you Sullivan's did. is not there anymore. And I would oh, walk no? in the door and George, the bartender, would start pulling my Guinness. Okay. And it was cool. That is cool. You know? I mean, well, it's always nice to be, you know, sort of norm. Yeah. Yeah. You belong. And I think that's what all of us really want is we want to belong. We we want to find our tribe. Mm-hmm. And I'm just At least like someone looking, you have in common with. Right. And I just like looking all over the world for my tribe, which is runners. Right. So cross-cultural runners exchange something i'm trying to figure that out i don't know right so and and you have lived in different places for many years Mm -hmm. right like you lived in new york for what 15 seven seven Mm -hmm. yeah somewhere between seven and 15 years but that's a long time probably seven well yes that almost beat it out of me but i survived you you lived and how long have you lived in portland oregon oh my god 19 years now okay and then um and then you guys lived in China for a couple of years too, didn't you? No, no, that was only four or five months. Oh, really? Yeah, it felt like years. <laughs> oh, did it? <laughs> yeah. You were in the that mainland, was hard. Right? That was harder? That was really hard. Guangzhou. Cause, well, because no one spoke English at the time, and I speak zero Chinese because it's really hard yep. language to learn. And so I really could not communicate with people. And that makes me really frustrated because I love people and I love communicating and, right. and I couldn't say, I mean, I, we couldn't even, you know, like in, in Italy, you can sort of fake it, right? Right. Like, but cause it's could, a Latin based yeah. language. But in China, there was just nothing. Well, it, there is Google translate now. Now, which, but which, I was there in the nineties. You were there in the nineties. <laughs> there was no Google. And, uh, cause I remember in Vietnam. <laughs> there were when, charades is what there were. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, uh, 
<laughs> you know how like there's some people who have traveled to other countries and, and teach English. Yes. Have that, you ever thought of that? I have thought of that. And that is on my list for kind of next year to, to maybe try it out and see if I like it. But right. I might like working with the bats. And I might right? try to parlay that into some kind of monetized thing. I don't right. Know. Where it's not a volunteer gig, where it's a paid right. gig. Because I'm going to have to make some money eventually. Right, right. Because right. this is your leap year. This is my leap year. So this, this is, is the year, the year when, that when did it saved start? up for. When it did it start? started October 12th. Oh, that's right. The month uh, of your birthday. 2018. Okay. So yes. Th- and as far as you're concerned, you're going till October again? Um, probably back in September. Okay. Just because that seems like a nice time to come, come back. back. I love September in Portland. And uh, yeah, but but I don't know what I'm going to find on yeah. the way. So it's just a, it's a... It's a vague kind of finish right, so line. Because what you have for sure upcoming is going to be um, your... New Zealand, Australia, and Eastern Europe. Well, yeah, Moscow, Romania, uh, Bulgaria, and then I'm going to Paris to see a friend. Oh wow! Who's having a sabbatical there? Okay, Joseph. And then uh, there's some trails I want to run in Scotland and in Wales. Okay. And I have friends in the UK, so I'd like to visit. To and your sister. Is she still there? No, she's back in. Oh, Maine. she's in Florida. She's or in Maine, Maine or where I'm like going to end up. That's going to be my sort of my final spending a couple weeks with Fox News at the cabin that my uh, dad has on the uh, lake. Uh-huh. Well, yeah, that's, uh, you might want to put the parental controls on that. Uh, <laughs> do you hear about Ooh, that? Wow, can I? Yeah, yeah. You just change it and just go, and and then you'll just get a oh. phone calls from him going. You know, I used to be able to get Fox, but I can't <laughs> get Fox God, News anymore. And you're me. like, well, I don't know. It's uh, some some uh, some places you just can't yeah, get it. Yeah, something and must be wrong with your dish, Dad. Yeah, sorry. sorry. You can you can uh, from the TV. You can block the channel. Oh my God! Like parents can do for their five year old, yeah. so the yeah. five year old kid doesn't see violence and porn and stuff. Which is exactly what you'd be doing it for, because uh, your dad doesn't need to see violence and porn on Fox no, News. No, he doesn't. No, because it's he, just going to drive him mad. And then he spits it back. Right. At me. Exactly. That is uh, unfortunate. I have another bat thing. Can I just share one? Please. Thing? Well, do you remember Beanie Babies? Oh, right. Do you remember Beanie Babies? Sure. There's a bat Beanie Baby. <gasps> There's a bat Beanie Baby, and it's got little Velcro on the ends of its little wings. Yeah. So you can stick the wings together and pull them apart. And oh, go yeah. Back and forth, back and forth. Okay. And you know how Beanie Babies have birth dates on them? No, I Beanie do ba- not know that. Have Why? you not had a Beanie Baby I've never dork? had a Beanie Baby. Or a Beanie Baby dork, I don't think. Oh, no. you should have one, because they all have a birthday. Okay. And guess what the bat's birthday is? Is it... A- My birthday. <laughs> I just uh, Rangers of the Dork Forest should know that TJ Ford so cool. um, loves her birthday. I do. And it's it, October 29th. Just, it, just so you in know, case. it's good to start thinking now. If you were thinking about getting or anything, mm-hmm. now's the time to yes. plan anything ahead. Bat-related, running-related, or travel-related. Did you, you see my Wonder Woman? Did I send you a Wonder Woman? I love that Wonder Woman thing. You know, I bought it for you. Oh, you did? Yeah. And then I was like, <laughs> nope, nope, I don't like it. <laughs> Keeping it. I think you should keep it. There's enough Wonder Woman to go around. There is enough Wonder Woman to go around, yeah. and um, but uh, it's it's the emo superhero guy. He does art where he draws a um, a superhero, and then he um, he draws them all sad. Yeah, and the Wonder Woman one is her with a sad look in her face, and it says, "I can't find my plane." Oh, because it's invisible. Wow! If you remember, that Wonder Woman has an invisible plane. She does. <laughs> That's so moving. That's almost as moving as the bat having my birthday. Exactly. <laughs> Back to your birthday. Let me tell you. Everything um, always circles around. <laughs> I'm surprised that we didn't. We should have started this with an alert. Birthday alert. <laughs> uh, what we could have started with was. I could dork for an hour about my birthday if you want. I don't want. know if you know this, but uh, DJ loves her. And, and uh, this year's birthday was amazing. It was also the emperor's birthday. <laughs> it was the emperor's or birthday. Or the king's birthday. We saw the killing fields. That was so much fun. Oh my God, that's so depressing. And uh, But moving. then there were fireworks. But then it was the king of Cambodia's birthday is also October 29th. Yep. And so we went on a harbor tour of uh, in Phnom Penh. It was in Phnom Penh, yes. Yes, and then yes. Uh, and the harbor tour had 
fireworks on your birthday. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then there was a cake. There was, there a, was a cake. And birthday cake. And an adult beverage and some fireworks. That was marvelous. And it was your birthday. It was a pretty <laughs> special birthday. It was it was certainly unique. You were on the, the Mekong many Delta birthdays. on your birthdays. Yeah. Well, uh, well, let's leave them with another favorite birthday memory. Do you have another favorite be- be- birthday memory? Oh, so many. Um well, you have two minutes. I have two minutes. Uh, when I was uh, 10 years old, my sister sewed a very fancy doll for me. Oh. And she hid it. And I had to do this like scavenger hunt where she left notes all over the house. And I followed them and followed them. And then I found the doll who was tucked into my bed. And then we all went out for steamed clams. Wow. All right. 10. That's a good year. I was 10. 10 was good. It was a good one. It was good. Uh, how about 20? Anything good? We, we knew each other I don't other know. We, you and I went oh, out remember? and got shit-faced, I'm sure. That's what we did That's on what, all of our birthdays in but college. But remember the time that we were having a surprise birthday party, and then I we went out to dinner, and I was like, I got to do a set. I got to get home. I got to get back to the uh, co-op and do a because I'm doing a set, and you got really mad at me because you're like, <laughs> it's, it's my, my birthday, birthday. <laughs> and you want to rush me out of this restaurant back to Zobelis, uh, which was the name of the co-op. <laughs> In Madison, Wisconsin. And then we got back and you were so mad with me. And then you were like, I was so mad. And now there's a party for me. <laughs> party for me. Yes. Yay. Yay. TJ Ford, you guys. This has been the dorkdom of bats, travel, and running with uh, Earthlings Anonymous on Instagram. Thank you for doing the dork forest. Thank you for inviting me, Jackie Cation. It's always a pleasure. And you know the rules out there, Rangers. Take care of each other. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat, <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh, my God. Thank we you. Why don't we just call that as the end of the show?